Ladies and gentlemen, can I, can I just ask people to come forward and let people in who want to come in at the back? Thanks very much. Um, this is, um, well, this is the second day. Some of us have done a, a number of events already. Uh, and I think over the last 24 hours, you've, you've uh, listened and heard quite a lot about the Northern Powerhouse and what the Northern Powerhouse is and what it isn't, uh, what uh, it's about in terms of science innovation, uh, how we drive uh, SMEs, how we drive business growth generally, how we actually create those higher value sectors, which we all know is not in important for the future growth of the city. It's absolutely key in actually creating that platform for international collaboration, trade and investment, all the rest of it. Well, I don't think anything um, actually uh, recognizes uh, those values more than what you're gonna hear about today, what, what Chris and, and Rowena are gonna talk about through the, about the corridor, uh, key uh, assets of global distinction, uh, fortunately located in Manchester, uh, and how we're actually going to try and utilize those assets to actually deliver um, outcomes which are unprecedented, certainly for Manchester and the Northwest. But before I introduce Chris and Rowena, there's gonna be a short film. There is going to be a short film. <laughs> there is a short film. Very good. Globalization and digital technology are driving huge changes in the way we live and work. They have made the special qualities of cities attractive again. Knowledge-based companies thrive in city locations, inspired by a vibrant culture and ability to connect with other industries. Innovation districts are the new urban ecosystems that will drive our economy. They create opportunities for different people to work together in unexpected ways, to co-invent and co-produce important new discoveries for the world. Corridor Manchester is our innovation district. It is our journey. Rich in its diversity, global in outlook, teeming with life. A dense, supercharged concentration of world-class academic and research institutions teaching hospitals, cultural venues, and a knowledge-rich business community spanning startups to global corporates. We are creating neighborhoods where business, education, research, and culture collide. Places to live, work, and socialize. Cafes, film festivals, music performances, art, and theater. Spaces where people can meet and exchange ideas. A collaborative community, giving life to new initiatives through unexpected pairings. Medical, arts and academic institutions demonstrate the power of combining to break down physical, mental and social taboos. Engineers, coders and musicians have combined to engage and inspire our next generation with robots that entertain. The Central Library meets Google, giving Manchester's businesses the digital skills needed for survival and growth. In fact, digital innovation will be hardwired into the streets with everyday objects connected to the internet to improve people's daily lives, bus stops that give directions, street lamps that know when to keep you safe, creating a smart city for smart people. Corridor Manchester is a hotbed of unexpected partnerships and surprising results. Our journey is about innovation, collaboration and transformation, a journey that's relevant to everyone. Join us in creating the future now. Great. Great. Well, good morning, everyone, um, and welcome. I hope, I hope you like the, uh, the film a little bit different than uh, the usual property fly-throughs, and particularly its soundtrack. That was uh, commissioned uh, for us by the uh, musicians uh, from Manchester's internationally renowned conservatoire, the Royal Northern College of Music, and just another good example of uh, Corridor Manchester's collaborations. Now, I think we all know, as, as Howard was saying, there's something extraordinary going on at the moment. I hope the film sort of captured a bit of the essence of it. Um, yes, there's a heck of a lot of building activity, over two and a half billion uh, pounds worth happening in, in Corridor Manchester, but behind it, there is something much, much bigger. Uh, there probably isn't a chief exec anywhere who thinks their business in five years' time will resemble their business today. 
The US military have come up with this idea of a VUCA world, one that is volatile, uncertain, changing, and ambiguous. And, and today we're talking about one of the biggest changes in the way we live and work in response to that, to that VUCA world. It's about bringing like-minded people together, like this at, uh, at MIPIM, with a whole range of different talents and creating environments where they can interact and collaborate, spending time together, sharing original thinking and, uh, and great ideas. Uh, this collabor collaborative way of working and being is, uh, is at the heart of what we call Corridor Manchester and is key to the future of this great city region's economy. Now, for the past few years, Rowena and I have shared uh, the same slot at MIPIM, but given separate speeches, and we've gone on too long. Uh, particularly because there is just so much happening in, uh, in Corridor Manchester. So, with more going on than ever, we're doing a little collaborative job this year in an effort to prove that collaboration can produce a better end product and be more efficient. We'll see about the latter. Uh, so, anyway, let's see how we get on. Thank you, Chris. Chris, can you hear me? Is my mic working? Yep. Um, Chris is already ad-libbing, but never mind. Um, I know where we are in the script. <laughs> the way we do business is changing. There are many reasons for that, of course, but for me, in this digitally driven world of ours, one thing stands out, which is that technology has democratized knowledge. Information, which was once a preeminent and a very private source of power, is now as public as a library book. In this world, it's the creative use of information which is the source of competitive advantage and the best businesses know that actually they have to collaborate to compete. And the people and the sectors which are driving economic growth in our city region, they all embrace this truth. They're building business models built upon open innovation. Their currency is data and their skill, the ability to collaborate across boundaries. They understand how data that is acquired for one purpose can be deployed for another and how opportunity can be enriched by working with people who view the same data and the same challenges but through a different lens. These people and businesses have a strong need to cluster. There's nothing new about clustering. Clustering is what creates cities in the first place. But today's clusters are driven by a desire to be with people who think like me not people who do what I do. Being with people who do what I do produced Lincoln's Inn in London. Um, being with people who think like I think produced Kendall Square in Boston. These clusters are our innovation districts, the engine rooms of growth today. And the Brookings Institute, and I have to try not to say this with an American accent, <laughs> described as the ultimate mashup of entrepreneurs and educational institutions, startups and schools, mixed-use development and medical innovations, bike sharing, bankable investments, all connected by transit, powered by clean energy, wired for digital technology, and fueled for caffeine. I think the fuel for caffeine bit's a bit cheesy, but never mind. <laughs> but in these innovation districts, boundaries are porous, information is shared between scholars and scientists, technologists, artists, and industrialists with innovation that is powered by different perspectives shared challenges, ideas, and opportunities. Absolutely. They're, they're just classic case of the whole being greater than the sum of the parts. And uh, certainly in our innovation district, we've got a lot of, a lot of parts. Um, Bruce, who uh, uh, Rowena referred to, described them as having three clear characteristics, Pro proximity, density, and this vital culture of collaboration that we're talking about. It's about shifting those boundaries between the public and private space, between work, life, culture, and leisure, between the different organizations, disciplines, and people. Corridor Manchester has and does all of these things in spades. It's a prime location next door to one of the most progressive city centers in Europe. And it's home to many of the city's world-leading centers of knowledge, science, technology, business, art, music, and dance. Each of these centers could, in their own way, be an anchor for a progressive property development if you think Central St. Martins and what it did at King's Cross, well, not only do we have the next best art school in the, uh, in the country, but more than a dozen other brilliant anchors in their own right in Corridor Manchester. We've got the footfall. We've got 70,000 students studying here every day in the two nationally respected universities. The University of Manchester, one of the top 40 universities in the world. MMU, the most applied to university in the UK. Alongside these students, 60,000 people work across a range of industries and organizations in Corridor Manchester, bioscience, health, uh, advanced materials. The new Graphene Engineering Innovation Center will see industry-led development in applications. There are seven hospitals that make up the largest clinical campus in Europe. 
and MSP's role in catalyzing commercial opportunity from these knowledge-rich industries, institutions has produced a vibrant and fast-growing community of over 200 science and tech businesses on the Science Park with a powerful pipeline of growth. MSP City Labs building is now full of such businesses ranging from big international companies like Takaji, who make beautiful precision ophthalmic instruments, to Elisagen Diagnostics. This is a fast-growing supplier of genetics testing services, which only two years ago were in our MedTech incubator. So that the pace of growth of these companies is incredible. It isn't just, as well, the research-hungry major corporates and science companies. We're also talking to a number of businesses represented here today from design and engineering sectors that can see the benefits of collaborating with the best minds in the city as they look to innovate their business proposition. And all of these people and businesses come with a kind of open and positive mindset that Rowena was talking about. In other words, we have the ingredients for creating something extraordinary, joining other such hubs around the world that are attracting the dynamic and progressive businesses and where new ideas and innovation are a way of life. Thanks, Chris. I think probably the, most, the single most ambitious collaboration yet is called Health Innovation in Manchester. This partnership is designed to make the most of the opportunities that are presented for us by Devo Mike. And our shared objective is to accelerate innovation and improve the health of the population of Greater Manchester and beyond. Health Innovation in Manchester brings together all of the region's health and social care providers together with the universities, the research institutions and industry to focus our combined efforts on tackling our most pressing health problems, speeding up and streamlining the whole health innovation process. If I told you that on average it takes 15 years to get a new therapeutic treatment to market, you'll understand the urgency that we have. The endeavour in Health Innovation Manchester is extraordinary, partly just because it's so important but also because we're joining up the players in a system that is quite astonishingly fragmented. The bar we've set ourselves is extremely high, and surprise, surprise, our progress is being watched really with immense interest across the UK and beyond. From across the world, if we get this right, industry will gravitate to Manchester, and we will get it right. Joining forces to bid for projects or funding is one of the things that we do exceptionally well in Manchester and have done for a long time. So this year, we bid for and won Life Sciences Enterprise Zone status, both for MSP City Centre Campus and for Audley Park. We bid for and didn't quite win the main home for Innovate UK's Precision Medicine Catapult, though we are going to be a centre of excellence for that catapult. But the quality of our assets and the tenacity of our partnership one through an orderly park was selected as the home for another IUK um, life sciences catapult, this one on medicines discovery. The Triangulum project, which many of you may have heard of, was another brilliant win that actually launched um, in 2015, the really outstanding research and development initiative that will position the city as a world leader in sustainability. This one brought together Manchester City Council, the University of Manchester, Manchester Metropolitan University, with industry partner Siemens and the cities of Eindhoven and Stavanger to invest in renewable energy technologies. This is R&D that's in tune with our times and it has the potential um, to put Manchester right at the forefront of these technologies. For me though, nothing better embodies the breadth and the depth of corridor partnership than our successful Internet of Things bid. MSP will provide the home for a unique national technology project that is designed to link together major data sources to enable innovation across a whole range of public services, from health to transport to environment, community engagement, and personal safety on our streets. Manchester's winning bid brought together 21 partners, 21 partners, and they included global giant Cisco, some brilliantly creative um, digital tech um, SMEs, the city council again, MSP, Corridor Academic and Clinical um, Trust Partners. It's a project of huge transformative power and it will act as a magnet for tech investment and collaborators on an international scale. Winning is brilliant and we, we love winning, but actually <laughs> the taking part is pretty important in itself. It creates common cause, it shares knowledge, and actually it very often spawns the next idea. 
So one of the other things that we're really good at in Manchester is when we don't win, we manage to turn defeat into victory in a different way. Chris. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, certainly there's bit back. I mean, how many things have we bid for in the last... Uh, Last couple of years? I've lost count. Yes, Zillions. Dozens, dozens we, and dozens. We won almost all of them, yeah. but not quite. <laughs> um, so collaboration and innovation are already happening. What more can we do? Well, first of all, I think we can increase further still our focus on bringing together different organisations, disciplines and people in new neighbourhoods designed to bring yet more unity, connectivity and inventiveness to this uniquely resourced area. Here we have this remarkable concentration of, uh, of centres of both science and arts and knowledge combined with the commitment of the university's hospital and city council to have invested over a billion pounds dis during and despite the downturn of the, uh, the mid-2000s and a commitment to a total of two and a half billion by 2020. This has put the foundations in place then for the private sector to have the confidence to invest as the economy has picked up. And so this is why I'm so thrilled to announce uh, this morning that Bruntwood has been selected to become the strategic property partner to the Central Manchester University's Hospital NHS Foundation Trust. God, that's a mouthful, which is why we call it CMFT. Um, this 10-year partnership will see us help CMFT shape and develop their estate by providing property development expertise and flexible design solutions tailored to clinical need. Uh, you know, particularly exciting just given everything that Rowena's been talking about uh, with Health Innovation Manchester. Rowena spoke earlier about shifting perspectives and breaking down barriers. And uh, breaking down phys physical barriers has been exactly what we've been doing, one of the first major steps towards realising our vision for the corridor. Uh, we reached a significant milestone in our £90 million MBS Manchester Business School development last year with the demolition of, the, uh, of that terrible link bridge across Oxford Road. Its removal has helped visually connect the corridor back uh, to the city centre. And this redevelopment sees us creating more than just a place of uh, academia. Yes, we're building a 200,000 square foot world-class centre for education uh, with a 16,000 square foot exec ed centre, learning library, 39,000 square feet of retail and 326 bed hotel. But more importantly, we're creating one of those places in Corridor Manchester to foster that culture of collaboration and to produce the entrepreneurs of the future. Places where students rub shoulders with researchers, business people and academics. Um, it will form part of a new neighbourhood. Up the road, our vision for our development in partnership with Select Circle Square is a great example of how important the physical environment is in creating a new place where everything works together to foster connections. We envisage a place where scientists and students, analysts and artists can work together, driven by a guiding principle of the commercialisation of knowledge. One and a quarter million square feet of commercial space, three quarters of a million square feet of residential, 100,000 square feet of retail and leisure, two new hotels, a thousand space multi-storey car park, softened by a five and a half acres of public realm, and a new green square that is 25% bigger than St Anne's Square, a new natural park that runs along the Medlock, and in keeping with our City of Trees initiative, 187 new trees. These are the basic um, elements of it, but this new neighbourhood is so much more than the sum of its parts and doesn't focus on putting people in boxes, but rather creating a place where world-beating ideas will occur naturally and be brought to life. If you are able to get back to the stand here at 11.30, we've got a session with Bruce Katz um, and the design team of Circle Square and Partners Select to explore this scheme in, uh, in more detail. We're also applying the philosophy that we have developed for these two projects as we work up the scheme and development agreement with Network Rail and Manchester City Council at Oxford Road Station for approaching 700,000 square feet of homes, leisure and commercial space that will foster a community that works and lives together. This gateway to the city and corridor Manchester will exemplify Manchester as a place that thinks and does things very, very differently. Chris mentioned City Labs a moment ago, and I think it's worth coming back to just for a second because I don't think anywhere better captures the spirit of doing and thinking differently um, than City Labs. What somewhere else might have been a real head scratcher, a redundant hospital with a famous heritage in a listed building. This became the flagship first phase, and it's only the first phase of the Trust's vision for a commercial cluster of businesses which would draw inspiration from the clinical needs in the hospital and universities around it. These are businesses which want to work collaboratively to solve our health problems. They draw on research and clinical data, they work across data sets, they work with business support services that we provide to them, all in a place that actually physically makes that collaboration easy and where everybody knows their neighbours. 
in the broader science and technology space, number one MSP Central, which is our first new build on the MSP core campus, has been designed specifically for that collaborative business community. The ground floor of this building will belong to the campus as a whole. It is, I, know, I always use this expression, it is our heart for the park. It will work both for MSP businesses, but also will welcome like-minded souls from the businesses and, and, and other institutions surrounding it. Opens in winter 2016, it's already almost fully let, and it celebrates the whole idea of the innovation district. Open to all, mixing spaces for work, for leisure, for exercise, for eating, for drinking, events, networking, moving between day and night. We've also tried to make it beautiful, a place that kind of gladdens the heart as well as stimulating, stimulating the mind. In time, the whole of MSP's campus will be like that. Um, but this building for us is a significant landmark on the journey. In our innovation district, the shared spaces between individual places are hugely important because it's here that many of those interactions between people from different um, backgrounds, professional backgrounds, different interests will congregate and where those casual interactions can create wonderful things. As corridor partners, each one of us has got further major expansion planned over the next few years. And we share a commitment, in addition to that individual investment, to creating many more shared spaces than we have at the moment. A lot more bars, and I mean bars for grown-ups, not for students necessarily. Um, a lot more bars, a lot more cafes, a lot more restaurants, just places that bridge the working day and the rich cultural life that we have on the corridor. The corridor in Manchester is home to such a mix of arts and cultural institutions. It includes home, beautiful new home, the Whitworth, the Contact Theatre, Royal Northern College of Music, the Manchester School of Art, the Manchester Museum. Every one of these has had a period of recent investment and every one of those institutions has used that opportunity to reach out to the wider community, to break down barriers and to celebrate diversity and creativity. My own particular passion is the power of art in all forms to help us make sense of the world to challenge norms and to remove barriers and to destroy myths. The film you saw just now name-checked something called The Sick Festival, which is an event that uses art as a communication medium to frame discussion between scientists, doctors, you and me, on difficult and taboo health issues. Another MSP-based company, Future Everything, uses digital art forms to communicate everything from weather forecasting to sleep patterns. I mean, this is wonderfully stimulating and exciting stuff. And it's a perfect example of that ultimate Nash up uh, that um, Bruce Katz described in the Booking Institute piece that I quoted from earlier. Chris. And uh, the success of Corridor Manchester is not just uh, confined to its physical place, um, but also to what results, results from it in, uh, um, um, sorry, what results from the places within the corridor that's extending outwards across the region, it contributes um, to, that, uh, to that wider success as well. So in Didsbury, um, the Siemens site is an opportunity to develop three commercial buildings of over 150,000 square feet that will provide accommodation for office research and development and medical uses. Um, it's our ambition to attract like-minded companies, promoting collaboration with the two anchors that we have on the campus, on the one, at the one end Siemens and at the other Spire Healthcare, as well as the wider knowledge economy. Further out still, um, Corridor's influence is significant at our Oldley Park site in, uh, in Cheshire, which we announced here two years ago, uh, and is rapidly progressing. This 400-acre park offers 1.5 million square feet of world-class science space. We've already attracted over 100 companies into 70,000 square feet and have a further 190,000 square feet of occupiers in the pipeline. Plus, as Rowena has said, we've been selected as home for the uh, Medical Discoveries Catapult, and we'd always planned that Oldley Park should combine an exceptional community of bioscience SMEs with internationally important facilities uh, and businesses. So we're delighted that Oldley Park is also being selected as the government's chosen home for the National Institute dedicated to the development of new treatments for conditions that have become resistant to existing antibiotics. Such a, such a hot topic in the world at the moment. Uh, last month, we secured outline planning um, for the whole scheme, which includes 275 new homes, hotel, gastro, pubs, sports and leisure facilities. We brought our first office building to the market, uh, the beautiful 100,000 square feet Parklands, prime commercial space, 
And we're also on site with our first redevelopment, which will offer 300,000 square feet, speculatively, of office, laboratory, and manufacturing space due for completion uh, at the end of the year. Uh, I could go on and on, um, as there is so much exciting uh, development happening at the moment, but you'll be pleased to hear we won't. Um, well, I am, well, I do hope, though, is that this has given you a flavour of, of what's happening uh, in Corridor Manchester. Yes, the physical environment we have and are continuing to create is important in bringing together like-minded, but sorry, as important is bringing together the like-minded, inventive people and businesses. And it's this unique approach to collaborative working, sharing and interaction uh, that is adopted by all the organisations that call this part of Manchester home that truly, uh, that truly makes this work. A spirit, a culture and a commitment to making the extraordinary happen. Film talked about being on a journey. We're still on that journey. Um, it won't end. I hope it doesn't. It's far too exciting, actually. Uh, and what Corridor Manchester can be, I think, is still a future that is twice as bright as it is today. And my God, it feels pretty good to be part of. In the end, it's about people, and it's about creating a place that celebrates the power of human innovation and endeavor. Um, and it's just so good to be part of it. So come and join us. Thanks very much, everyone. I took your last. You did?